Let's go to question two and just highlight a few things that were problematic. But the first question, right, 2.1, it says, don't evaluate. In the sigma notation, sigma, as you know, represents the sum of. And in this instance, the term that is standing next to the sigma notation is 3 to the index n minus 2. The fact that you have an index attached to the base 3 tells you that that is going to give you a geometric sequence. I'm not going to <coughs> go any further than that, other than saying many learners applied the formula correctly and did quite well. But the question which posed many problems was 2.2. The word convergent is probably not emphasized enough. When we think of a geometric sequence, and we think of the sum of terms, the sum of terms, let's just write it out in general. If you have the sum of your terms, first term A plus AR plus AR to the power 2, and you continue like that, until you get to the nth term, the last term in that sequence. If you add that, and I'm going to give you a little hint, the proof, the proof of that formula is very important. It's the only proof that's required, both for the arithmetic and the geometric. In paper one, you need to go and study that. Make sure that you can prove it. The formula appears on the formula sheet. But continuing from there, the sum to infinity reduces to a nice little formula. A minus R. And notice what happens, which many of us ignore. It says the following. It says this formula only applies if that is the case. If R is greater than negative 1, less than 1, and we say this implies convergence of the series. So the series will give me a definite answer because my values starting with the first are becoming smaller in the sequence. And hence, as n tends to infinity, that is why the sum to infinity, it gives me a result which will not be attained if R, for instance, was a value greater than 1. So, in this question, you are asked to go and determine from the following. You are asked to go and determine from the given sequence 5x, x squared, x to the power 3 over 5. You are asked to go and determine when that sequence will converge. So obviously the convergence applies to the geometric sequence. You can check that it's a geometric sequence because if you multiply, as you can see, <coughs> from the first to the second, <coughs> there's going to be a common ratio. Let's find out how that common ratio can be attained. You can either take term 2 divided by term 1 or you could take term 3 divided by term 2, and you can continue like that. Now, let's quickly notice what happens. If we take the second term, it's going to give me x to the 2 divided by the first one, 5x. So that's going to give me x over 5. If I should go to the third term, x to the power 3 over 5, and I divide that by x squared, it's the same as saying we've got x to the power 3 over 5 multiplied by 1 over x to the 2. And that would also give me x over 5. So yes, there is a common ratio, which is x over 5. We have just stated earlier from the definition that for convergence, that common ratio r must be greater than negative 1, less than 1, but we found 
r now to be x over 5, making it a little bit more challenging than just having x. And by multiplying by 5 throughout, this changes, right, to x being greater than negative 5 and less than 5, which means the answer that I need to get for x must lie within that range between minus 5 and 5. So I'm just whetting your appetite to go and look at that question again. 